In this video, I am going to show you what I got for Valentine's Day. It is kind of a big deal. I'm really excited. And we're going to do some Valentine's cooking and baking. This video was actually inspired by my daughter. I only have one daughter at the moment that I know of. This little baby that we're about to have could be a girl. Who knows? That is actually my guess. And I've not guessed wrong yet but we will see. <laughs> so my daughter um, is very excited about St. Valentine's Day and we've been dyeing everything pink and magenta with different kinds of fun stuff. So I'll, I'll take you along and show you some of our special pro projects. But first, I need to show you what I'm getting for Valentine's Day. So it's going to require me to clean out my freezer, which is a good task to do before baby arrives anyway. I'll just add this on my nesting accomplishment list, even though I, I had to do it. Like, it had to be done. Um, and that's because my husband is bringing home beef. So that's my Valentine's present. I'm just kidding. That's not really like for me, but that is like all a girl wants, right? That's just a stocked freezer. I mean, that's the most romantic thing I can think of, really. So I'm pretty excited. We have actually not had beef for over a month. This has never happened in my marriage. Um, but as our children grow and get bigger and eat more, we use more food. And we're just having to majorly adjust. So, you know, I always say babies are not expensive. And the way I do it, they're not. But big kids, they they do eat, you know, so they cost some. But that gives you time, right? You have lots of babies and you got time to figure out how to feed those big kids. So I went ahead and just kept up with the organizing energy here while I was waiting for John to get home. Just organizing the pantry. Needs to be done every couple of months, you know. And uh, lots of little, little baby lovin's. These parts I usually edit out of my videos, but... If you could see all the unedited footage, there's lots of footage of me holding, rocking, tending to a wound. Maybe it was inflicted by a sibling. You never know. Uh, disciplining all the regular activities of motherhood. But like I said, that's that's pretty personal, so I usually just crop a lot of that out. All right, so I got done what I could and organized everything. It looks nice and pretty. Made room for our beef. We got um, a half a beef processed, so it won't all fit up here. We do have a small deep freezer in the basement, but I actually got, well, I'm calling this all my Valentine's present, right? Because I do the cooking. <laughs> so I got a second Valentine's Day present, and that is a new deep freezer for the basement. Once again, you know, these are the kind of things that it's an investment having freezers and buying meat in bulk, but it actually, the savings is quite substantial over time. It, it really is. If you do the math, I mean, I think we pay like $3 a pound plus processing um, for our beef, but that's including steaks, ribs, roasts, all the parts. And um, it's, it's top notch, like better than anything you're going to get at the store. So it's so, so worth it. It's so nice to have a stocked fridge and freezer. So I'm just rolling right along with the organization. I really like using jars, mason jars, to organize. I like that I can see what's in them and it just looks nice. You know, it's not <laughs> that important, you know, what my, my pantry looks like. I guess not that important to other people, but it's important to me. I spend so much time in the kitchen. I don't want it to look like a chaotic mess all the time. I want to be able to open up my pantry, grab what I need, and go. Okay, let's move on and talk about something you all wanted me to expand on after my last video. In one of my last videos, I gave you a little peek of my cloth diapering stash for new baby, baby number five. This will be the fifth baby that I have cloth diapered, but I've learned a ton each time. And now that I've gone through everything, I know that I have what I need in my stash. And if you haven't watched that video, I'll link it 
up here in one of these corners. Just go back and watch that video and I'll show you what kind of cloth diapers I use and why I use this particular kind. I use flats, just spoiler alert. Just like, you know, great, great grandma. It's been like several generations since people use these, I think, but this is like the cheapest way to cloth diaper. And I personally think that when you fold a flat and fit it to a baby, it just fits the best. They're not so bulky, they actually fit to baby. And I love them, I love flats. I love that when you wash them, um, they get really, really clean. So a lot of the cloth diapers that have lots of layers and they're already pre-fitted and, and sewn into the shape of a diaper, when you wash that diaper, like you can't really get all of those layers clean. So over time, they just develop a smell to them, whereas the flats don't. So yeah, the reasons I love flats, number one, they're just dirt cheap. Number two, I personally think that they act they give the best fit to baby. Number three, they are the least bulky. Number four, they're the easiest to get clean and they don't stink. And gosh, yeah, that's probably it. Four reasons <laughs> just off the top of my head. So since these are brand new diapers and this right here is organic cotton, they need to be prepped. Anytime that you buy brand new cotton or hemp diapers, you need to prep them before you use them so that they're really, really absorbent and quilty. So like right now, this looks huge for a newborn, right? Even though it'll get folded down smaller, it still looks pretty big. And it just doesn't look very soft or quilty. But you will see, once I prep these cloth diapers, they will be so, so soft and ready for baby. I've still got a few weeks, but this is just something that it's gonna take me a whole day, not hands-on. It's like super easy. Prepping cloth diapers is essentially just washing them several times. Wash, dry, wash, dry, and I'll, I'll tell you the exact process. But anyway, it's something I just want to get done. I wanna get it out of the way, and then I'll set these diapers to the side and they will be ready when baby comes. I really like to get, I don't have that much prep before I have a baby because, um, my nursery is not for babies, it's for toddlers because the new baby will just sleep in bed with me and I just don't need anything. Like I have everything I need. The only thing that I ever have to do is just go through my cloth diaper stash and make sure all that's good to go. So once I get this prepared, then I can rest and just relax and wait for the arrival of our sweet little baby. All right, so I've got my huge stash of, let's see, what at 48? flat diapers. Um, that's a, not, you know, a newborn, you're going to change them like minimum 12 times a day. So with flats, since they're so, so cheap, it's very easy to just buy a huge stash of them so you're not ever stressed about laundry. I've got my huge stash of brand new flats here. We're going to start the prepping process. So step one to prepping flats, you just run them through your washer on a um, warmer hot water cycle, no detergent. And this is to just remove any residue from the packing, packaging uh, process. And in the end, it really does help them to be more absorbent when you actually start the washing and drying. So I'm going to put all of these, and I'm gonna unfold them and you know, just put them in a big ball, throw them in the washer, run them through with no detergent on a wash cycle. And then right after that, I'm not even gonna take them out of the washer. They'll stay in the washer and then I will put detergent in and do my first actual wash. So the first thing you do when you run them through on a wash cycle with no detergent, you don't dry after that. You're just kind of rinsing um, anything off before you start the washing process. Then when I do that first wash cycle with detergent, I will dry them after that and make sure they're completely dry. Then I'll repeat, I'll wash with detergent, dry wash with detergent dry now since these are unbleached this process will have to happen six times at least like six times and I know that seems like a lot but it really is necessary and you're going to want to change the uh, lint trap on your dryer every single time you dry these because you will see that thing just fills up so quickly when you are prepping your diapers but by the time that they are prepared they will be so absorbent and there's actually a little test you can do to just make sure that they are absorbing liquid. If you did not catch our little chat on cloth diapers, I think it was in last week's video. I'll have to check, but I will link it up in the top corner. You can click on that and 
you can check. It's one of my videos. It's in the title. It says something about cloth diapering, so you can check that out. But this, this will be my fifth time doing it, so I try new things every time. But I think I finally got it down with the flats, and I really, really like wool. So that is what I'm going with this time. And, you know, I've still got a few weeks, but I want to get all this stuff prepped because in like the week or two leading up, I, I have gone over my you know, over 40 weeks the last couple of times. So, you know, in that last week or two, I don't like to do too much at all. I just like to rest. And I know that about myself. So getting prepared now is what needs to happen, even when I don't necessarily feel like it. All right. So we are going to do some Valentine's baking. If you have been subscribed here, you'll know that I put out one long video every week. Well, there are going to be two. This is actually an extra video. Like I said, it was just inspired by um, my daughter wanting to do all of this. I'm actually, well, she, we are hosting an all-girls Valentine's dinner party. And everything is going to be pink. Which is just so funny because I was a total tomboy when I was growing up. Uh, thank, thank goodness back then you could just like have a tomboy phase and people didn't make it out to be weird or like put pressure on you. I never felt anyone pressured me, even though I was definitely a tomboy. I mean, the hair, everything. Like we, we my family, we still laugh. We look back at the pictures and I, I look like a little boy, right? I wanted that. I wanted to look like a little boy, but um, I like being a, a woman and a mom now very, very much. I would not trade it anyway, but I just didn't have the phase of Barbies and pink or anything like that. I always loved babies though. So I guess that, that was kind of my giveaway, uh, you know, to truly embracing the feminine side is I, I've always loved babies. So starting out here with all the pink things I, I started browning some butter because we're gonna make pink cookies and I'm using beet powder for all of this and then I'm also going to try out some pink beet root dyed artisan bread that's what I'm mixing up right now this is my beginners basic artisan bread recipe all of these recipes will be linked for you guys in the description so all I did was added I think, let's see, this, okay, so I did this two times. You're going to see I did this two times because um, I wanted to see what it was like with a little bit of beet powder and a lot. <laughs> but this first time, I just added three tablespoons, which is like 30 grams of beet powder, and it made a really pretty dough. I actually did not decrease the amount of flour either, and I'm kind of going back and forth here. I'm prepping the cloth diapers, so you'll see me like switch a load of laundry, go back in the kitchen, and that gives you a good idea of what every day looks like when you're home. You just like, you know, I, I take advantage of little pockets of time. Like if I can go back and forth between three or four things, I do just to keep things rolling. Like I don't have like a laundry day or a dedicated cleaning day. It's just every day trying to stay busy. Now that is just what works for me, but I know, you know, a lot of very organized and productive homemakers swear by a very set schedule where they do, you know, divide tasks out. So you just you just have to find what works for you. All right, I'm moving on to the third thing that we're going to make in this video, and this is pink pasta. So this is just my same pasta recipe, but I added one tablespoon or 10 grams of beet powder per batch of this recipe. So in this bucket is a double batch of pasta. We are going to be making some pink ravioli and pink pasta, pink noodles. So then I'll let her decide which one. This is like my my testing day. I was not actually preparing all of this for the Valentine's uh, dinner party for her and her little friends, but um, She's going to tell me if she wants to do the ravioli or the pink pasta and we're gonna like I said We're just we're just trying some stuff out. These are all tried and true recipes for me. So it's just really adding in the beetroot powder for color 
and I, I'm curious to see if it's going to affect the taste that much. I actually love beets, but I am alone in that love for beets in my family. No one else in my family likes beets. So I finished up that pasta dough and I'm letting that rest. The beetroot artisan bread is proofing and now I'm coming back to the cookies because I had the butter browning. So like I said, going back and forth between tasks, it's just something that you kind of learn to do over time. And you know what I mean, if you've, if you've been, you know, cooking, baking, managing a home for a long time, you just do, you just go back and forth <laughs> until you get stuff done. So the dough is looking, looking really good. I'm adding in my salt, same process that I use. You can go back to my tutorial videos on making artisan bread if you want to see me break down that process and exactly what to do or you can check out my blog post in the blog post i actually do like a frequently asked questions troubleshooting tips section i tried to put everything in there so all of that will be linked for you guys in the description but anyway that was my i added the salt in and, and now we'll go back to proofing that artisan bread and then start our stretch and fold series but I need to get back to the cookie dough. So these are sourdough sugar cookies. This is just a really good sugar, like base sugar cookie recipe that you can modify in so many different ways. So like I said, the recipe will be linked, but you could do so many different things with this one recipe. So for today, I'm adding in beet powder and white chocolate chips. We just thought that would be a pretty combo. So. For our first go round, this is our first batch of these cookies. The two things that we had to make twice was the artisan bread and the cookies because we didn't we we didn't think that the color you'll see when it when it turns out. We just wanted it to be more pink. So the first time I made the cookies, I only added two tablespoons or 20 grams of beet powder, and the next time I made them, I added a half a cup. That's a lot more beet powder, but you'll see, you'll see why they turned out just beautifully. All right. So I'm using a lot of flour today. I have to refill my uh, glass flour jar from my bucket that I refilled earlier this morning. So lots of little storage places tucked away all over the kitchen. And you guys have been asking for a kitchen tour. I need to do that. I guess one reason I haven't done it is because there's still so much I want to do in this kitchen. There's painting that needs to be done. There's some wallpapering I'd like to do. There's a whole wall uh, where a built-in should have gone, and it did not go. And so it's just an empty wall. So my tour would be, you know, showing you my incomplete kitchen. But I like it. I'm, I'm happy with it six years later. Getting back to the artisan bread, because I've, I've got the cookies in the oven. The pasta dough is still res resting. You can see it's a really pretty dough, like a light pink dough. And it's stretching and folding nicely. Looks like a good consistency. So we'll see what we end up with here. I need to make the cheese filling for the ravioli. When we have the Valentine's party, it's actually going to be during Lent. So we will not be eating um, meat. So this is going to be a cheese ravioli, which, you know, I don't know how much of a sacrifice that is because cheese is also very, very delicious. But I'll make an exception. We don't have to have a sacrificial meal on a Valentine's party for my daughter. All right, so the cookies are coming out of the oven. And they were pretty, so that, so first of all, they're delicious, but I, I knew that because this is like a base recipe that I, I use. It's my tried and true sh uh, sourdough sugar cookie recipe. The cookies were delicious, but they were very light pink, and we were going for something a little darker, kind of like the dough, the pasta dough you see me handling now. So I'll show you those cookies really quick before we move on with the pasta. All right, so they were very, very light pink. So we liked these, like I said, but we wanted to try for something darker too so we saved the rest of that cookie dough and we're gonna make more we're gonna do uh, like light and dark sugar sourdough sugar cookies for the party so that recipe that used two tablespoons of beet powder in 
the sourdough sugar cookies was a keeper and you you could not taste the beets at all like not at all now later on when you see me make the um you know second attempt with more beet powder there is a slight beet taste but it was still so slight i couldn't believe it anyway back to the pasta we've done this before too you guys we've been together for gosh year and a half now we've done a lot of things in the kitchen we have made homemade pasta i have a whole video dedicated to homemade pasta and i'll link that because <laughs> we talk a lot about the process about preserving it um and this is just my go-to pasta recipe that I make with, it's so simple. It's just flour, egg, salt, and oil. And then, of course, the beet powder here. But I am cutting sheets because I'm going to make the, uh, run it through the, attach, the cutting attachment and make the noodles first. And set those aside to dry. Quick break before I finish up the pasta to show you. My first round of prepping the cloth diapers, the cloth flats, is finished. So look how quilty and soft this looks after just one round. So this was um, ran through on a, on a cycle with no detergent, then it was washed with detergent and then dried. So that is round one. Now I need to repeat that process at least five more times. So I'm just going to keep this rolling. It is 4.15. I need to finish these raviolis I'm about to make. Get my final stretch and fold finished for the bread. And then we're going out to eat. And I'm done for the night, done for the weekend. So probably tomorrow or the next day, I'll show you all of the diapers once they are fully prepped, dried, and then we'll fold them and put them away until the baby comes. All right, let's get back to this ravioli. So making ravioli is very, very easy. I just roll out the big sheets, and you'll see here I make two rows of ravioli, and I just use a little handheld pasta cutter <laughs> sealer thing. You'll see that in just a second. What I'm doing now is just evening up the ends of the sheets of pasta and running the little ends through the cutting attachment. Um, so they're like little noodles and I'll just add that to my pasta stash. The cheese filling that I made is very simple. It's just a ricotta, like an Italian shredded cheese blend and salt. That is all that's going to go into the filling. And then when I actually make the ravioli, I'm going to make a creamy shrimp it will be like a creamy shrimp ravioli, but the shrimp will be in the sauce, not in the ravioli. So you can see I've got a tiny little cowboy over there trying to help me out, just precious. <laughs> so this is how I make my ravioli. I just um, use like a little tablespoon to scoop out a, a table, heaping tablespoon of whatever filling, whether I made a meat filling or I've done so many different kinds of ravioli, <laughs> cheese filling, whatever. And with this Atlas pasta machine, which I'll link the pasta machine, I absolutely love this thing. Um, I can make two rows of ravioli per sheet, use my little handheld cutter sealer thing, and cut and seal my ravioli, and then I'm finished. Now, we, like I said, we're going out to eat tonight, so... This was just a project that my daughter and I were working on today, but we're not actually, I'm not actually going to cook these ravioli today. I, I'm just going to um, freeze them. So that's something you could do. Look how pretty. You could make a bunch of ravioli and freeze batches for, you know, easy cooking. Then, you know, you just drop them in your boiling water or whatever, or I could boil them straight away, fresh, just like they are. But like I said, we went out to eat. So we're going to move right along to the next day. And you will get to see the final product in this video. So the first thing I did when I woke up was I was just preheating a Dutch oven for the artisan bread. And you saw me just yelling there. My husband and I were joking about something. And I guess like funny but not funny, we both had chronic ear infections as kids. And we're both deaf. Like, I, I mean, it's 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 actually really bad. Like, our hearing is, is really bad because chronic, chronic ear infections as kids. So we have to yell at each other all the time. But I guess that makes us a good match because we can just laugh about it. 
Anyway, so I went ahead and scored my bread with a pretty heart shape. You will see that. Um, I had some bacon in the oven, so I had to move things around a little bit. And now I'm going to bake this loaf. So, so excited to show you the final product of this loaf. It turned out really pretty. We will evaluate and talk about that here in a minute. And, you know, this is just the usual baking process for me. I personally bake my artisan bread covered for 30 minutes at 425 and then uncovered for another 8 to 10. You can kind of see the heart there. It's really popping out off of the loaf. Looks very, very pretty. And my daughter absolutely loved it. So there is our finished loaf. Let's take a look at this. I really, you guys know I'm not that artistic, but I was very proud of this uh, heart that I scored because it's, it's not, like it's actually, you know, somewhat symmetrical. Turned out very pretty. Now I will say the loaf, even though the dough was pink, the beet powder, you know, it, it faded and lost its color. And look, on the inside, it just looks like a whole wheat or like a, almost like a rye loaf or something. So it was very soft. Um, it was really good. The taste was great. Couldn't taste the beets. It's just that the pink faded, which was kind of disappointing. All right, so my flat diapers are prepped and ready to go. And they are so soft, they've shrunk down a lot. So they're not quite as big because this is a newborn flat. For now, really, I am good to go as far as being prepared with my cloth diapers. That could not have been more simple, even though it took all day, well really, <laughs> two days because I didn't really stay on top of the prepping process the first day. It was not really hands-on time. It was just switching one load from the washer to the dryer and back and forth again. For now, I'm just going to fold these up and set them in a little basket to the side. I haven't set up my um, bedside cart yet. I have like a little cart I put my, by my bed with all of my diapering supplies. It's really got just all baby things and postpartum things in this little cart. That way I don't have to get out of bed at night. I just have everything right there. And over the next couple of weeks, we will, you know, every video will just feature just a little bit about preparing for baby. I, I'm just going to do that instead of like a big baby prep video. I'll just sprinkle in the kind of a little bit of what I'm doing that week to prepare. So you'll get to see a little more, you know, little snippets of baby preparation in the weeks to come. Now, we have some cookie dough. I told you like when, when we make cookies, I don't ever bake the whole like batch, you know, whether it's two dozen or three dozen or whatever, I don't ever bake them all at once. We usually just do a dozen because we don't need to sit around eating cookies all the time and then freeze the rest. And that's what my daughter and I are doing. We're just preparing the cookie dough that was in our fridge to freeze. And that will be just a nice little addition to my freezer stash of meals and snacks and treats for when the baby comes. All right, let's fast forward. I did tell you guys that I did a second attempt attempt on the artisan i was really happy with the pasta that was like the perfect ratio of beet powder to give it a pretty color and you'll see that here in a minute like how it turned out final product um but the artisan bread i wanted to try for a deeper pink color so i increased to a half cup of beet powder in my artisan bread and i made the sugar cookies with a half cup of beet powder it's a ton of beet powder and i'm like you know this is they're either going to be really pretty and taste good or they're going to probably be pretty and taste awful like the beets gonna just be so strong but they turned out perfectly so the recipe for pink sourdough sugar cookies will be in the description and I'll put on my blog pictures of like what it looked like when I just did a couple tablespoons as opposed to a lot of beet powder and the recipes for both variations but it is a tried and true sugar cookie recipe so I know they will be good either way whether you want them very very pink or light pink. Now I'm gonna move on and show you the shrimp ravioli. It just turned out perfectly. Look at that pink ravioli. It was delicious. That recipe will be in the description too. If you're looking for a uh, pink Valentine's dinner idea, I'm sure, you know, ladies, your, your husband would just be thrilled by pink ravioli, right? Maybe not, but uh, kids like it. <laughs> kids think it's neat, at least if you have daughters. Okay, now this was the second attempt on the... Um, Beet artisan bread, and I tried a different scoring pattern. I did not like it as much at all. 
I didn't think it was pretty. I liked my first one. I wish I would have just done the first one again, but that's how you learn. You know, you try new things. And this was the loaf that I added a half cup of beet powder. And I'm going to tell you, it actually messed with the consistency of the dough. It didn't feel right to me when I was working with it. The loaf was okay, but I didn't get the oven spring I was hoping for. However, it was a very, very pretty uh, pink magenta color. So that's something you could play around with if you want to try the beetroot artisan bread. I do have another idea for pink sourdough bread that will be on the video that comes out Wednesday, so you guys will see that too. Lots of pink this week. Anyway, that's all for this week. Well, for today. I will see you on Wednesday.